Hey, I love that you're here in the house of God today. You look good. You look beautiful. Look at you on a rainy Sunday. Who cares, right? I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house despite the weather. Here's my one rule today. You can't act like the weather. That's my one rule for you. Because if it is your first time, you're probably sitting next to a clapper, shouter, sweater. I don't know. Hey, some people get buck in here and they go wild. And they start like, you know, <laughs> there's perspiration falling from their face. You'd be like, they serious up in here. Yep. Because we believe that the word of God and the prince of God is worth everything that we could possibly give him. We do. And uh, that's why we like, we like the life. We, we, we're not a dead church. We're alive. And so that's why you are hearing and feeling this sense. And, and so funny because visitors will be like, I like the energy. And I'm like, I don't know. I, the vibes. And I always tell them, I'm like, it's not a vibe. Good vibes don't break yokes. You know what I'm saying? This, I'll preach on that alone. The anointing. That's what you're feeling. It's the anointing and it's the presence of God. And we are grateful that you are here today. If it is your first time, don't be afraid. Jump in with two feet. If you hear something that you, you gravitate towards, a word that God says, maybe through me in the next few moments, hey, you know what? Shout, put a clap on it, put a praise on it. And uh, we, we are a, we're a hollow back church. And so we're grateful that you're here. Jump in an H group, by the way. Jump in an H class because we see so many, we see thousands and thousands of people saved every single year. However, we would love for you to get discipled move forward with God, not just a every once in a while pop into a weekend experience. Like you need a daily discipline in your life. And so we would love to walk with you as well. And uh, my wife, my family sends their love. She is constantly, every time I come here, always saying how, how much she's like, she's like back in. We had baby last year. We had baby Bo last year and it kind of took her in a, you know, kind of like, like hunkered back down and all that kind of stuff. But now he's about seven, eight months old and kind of coming into his own and he's, he's amazing. But she's getting back this itch to jump back in ministry. And she wants, she's like, I want to go preach in Modesto. And that girl will be coming back very soon. We're looking at dates right now, actually. We're looking at dates, and it's sooner than later. So uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing time for, for you ladies. And then uh, for all the men, we're going to do this guy as well. <laughs> Check out this guy. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure figure out a, a different name. I think it's Stronger Men is actually our real name. But, yeah, we, we love it. We're going to build you up. We're gonna, is anybody, though, you, you excited to be at church today? Like, for real. Like, you came for a word. Like, you came for a breakthrough. Like, you need something to happen, in, or you want something to happen in your life. Because I, I, I'm just not, I'm not of the, the flavor that just, like, plays church and does, like, like I come here for an experience, guys. Like, we, we come here for an encounter, for something real. And we're going to get a real word, and we're going to get an accurate word, but there is a life that is in this word that every single one of us needs. So however you walked in, I am so encouraged by this church. I'm so encouraged by what God is doing in this community. And I cannot wait to see what God has in store because it's not a week of miracles. It's not a month of miracles. It's the year of miracles. And we've already seen it. And you guys are already sending in so many miracle testimonies, and I'm so encouraged by it. But we are going to preach. We're going to talk about Jesus for a moment. We're going to talk. I'm going to give you the framework of how to pray for your miracle and pray for more. I'm going to give you that framework. And then at the end, I just want you to prepare your hearts. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to believe for you. And there's going to be breakthrough and there's going to be deliverance on your life. I know you came here and maybe someone drug you in or maybe you came. By the way, congratulations to everybody that got baptized. It's an incredible next step. I love that. One of my favorite things in the world is baptisms. And, um, but you have to understand, by the end of this, it's like I didn't come here just because I wanted to watch my friend get baptized. You know, no, I, I need deliverance. I need breakthrough. I, I need a touch from God. I need, and watch God do it. So let's go to your favorite book in the Bible, First Chronicles. Yes, that was a joke because most of you have no idea what is going on in First Chronicles, and it's a lot of genealogies, to be honest, but 
I'm not going to read you the genealogies. There's actually a break in the genealogies, which is this dude beget this person, beget this person, beget this person. There's a break in the genealogy, and it's called the prayer of Jabez. And maybe some of you have heard it before, but I pray that I'll be able to deliver it today in a fresh way, in a new way. And if you've never heard the prayer of Jabez, it's one of the coolest little moments. It's very short. It's very brief. Where a man named Jabez, here, check this out, decided to pray. When a man named Jabez, when a, when a man that no one knew decided to pray, something happened. It's amazing when you decide to pray anyway. Decide to pray anyway. First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Let's read this story. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. Here's his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Look at this. And God granted his request. How cool is that? Not just that he prayed, but that God granted what he prayed. How would you pray if you knew God was going to do it? I don't think you would pray small prayers. I don't think you would pray for the stray cat in your neighborhood to find a home. I think you would pray with audacious belief that God is about to do heal your body, deliver you. Like you would pray massive prayers. So what if I'm to tell you today that that same God that granted Jabez's request is the same God listening to you right now. He does not change through the ages. The generations do not alter his plans. He's still almighty. He still can do it. And I want you to know he granted his request and he's about to do a new thing in your life. And here's my title for you today. And God did it. And God did it. And God did it. Holy Spirit, move, speak, deliver, break through. And God, let this be all about you. May we walk and move and breathe and realize that you are working in our lives. May we not forget why we're here. May we realize it is only because of you we have what we have. But God, I thank you that we're about to go to another level today. For we are listening. Speak, Lord. Your church is listening. In Jesus' name. Come on, someone said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Oh, and God, we pray for the 49ers. And I am calling a church-wide seven-day fast starting today all the way until 3.30 in the afternoon next Sunday as we believe for greater things and Super Bowl championships and all that stuff. Someone had really big faith this morning. Maybe it was because of the message at the, at the early service. And they decided to, in the middle of me, you know, okay, Niners are going to the Super Bowl. But they decided to shout for the Cowboys. And I said, congratulations, you get to watch it from a couch. <laughs> Cowboys are at home. It's big faith, but it's all time to come together and believe in the Niners. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And God did it. Amen. Uh, you are dismissed. And I, th I do believe, you know, this statement. I love this statement. And, and so God did it and God did it. Here's what I've been praying. I want your testimony. I don't know your story. I don't know your journey. I don't know your difficulties. I don't know your valleys. I don't know your mountain highs, valleys. I don't know. But I do know that there is going to be a testimony and a thing that happens in your life. And you're going to walk around saying, God did it. I I've sensed it. I've seen it in the supernatural for you and for this church, something shifted this year. And I felt like, man, this is the year you're going to walk around saying, God did it. God did it. God did it. You're going to be a walking billboard. You're going to be a living testimony and God, that God did it. And then your work, you're going to actually start to spread it because you can't just be a Christian in church. You got to be one everywhere else. So people are going to be like, what is it on your life? You're going to be like, look what God did. I am a testimony of what the Lord, look what the Lord, that's one of my favorite statements. Look what the Lord has done.
And if you're still believing and if you're still in, if you're still managing the middle, if you're still in the tension of the waiting, then what you do is say, okay, God's going to do it. Because that level of faith is going to keep your hope alive. To say God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. When? I don't know. But I know who. I don't know when. I don't, but I know who. God's going to do it. And so we arrive at this. Let's parachute into this story with Jabez. Jabez is not really a known uh, uh, character in the Bible. We're in First Chronicles. We're in genealogy mode. Where usually when you get to your, your Bible reading plan, you're just kind of like, what do we do with these names? Like, what are we doing here? And so typically you just pass over it and you move on, but right in the middle, which also begs the notion that Jabez wasn't cut from a family that he knew how to pray. He had to break out of the lineage and the bloodline of what he was born into, and he had to do it different. Someone say do it different. Some of you have to do it different. Some of you have done it different, but he had to do it different because he had to put a demand on the, on the heaven to have an inheritance that his ancestors would not claim. Some of y'all are going to put a demand on heaven that your ancestors have not claimed, which means this, when you get what God has, it's already going to be tenfold, not because he multiplied it, but because you, you were born into a family who did not receive the promise of God because they didn't go after it. But look at you in church and look at you going after God look at you pounding on heaven's door so I believe that you're going to receive pressed down shaken together running over the inheritance that your ancestors did not claim it's in the will for you to say God give me what you have for me but give me what you have for them because I am saying I want it all I'll take it all I love Jabez because he rode up on the scene and didn't let his past dictate his next prayer. He's like, no, I know how to pray. And by the way, don't stop praying just because you're like, well, God's will is just going to happen anyway. Then what's the point of prayer? You're a robot then. The point of prayer is that prayer changes things, and the most thing that it changes is you. And it's going to change you, and it, and it shifts you. And all of a sudden, Jabez rolls up on the scene, but if we have to go back to the birth, we've got to go back to the birth. Maybe a little bit awkward, but let's talk about it. He was born, and his mom, in the middle of the birth, said, man, ouch, that was painful. And my wife has had four kids, and I've seen the ouch moments, and I was like, no, no, no. And mom decided to name him after her feelings of how she felt in the moment. Like, could you imagine, I'm talking to Lindsay, Mid contraction. What do you want to name our, our child? <laughs> Shut up. Perfect. Like, <laughs> it's fine with that. I don't know. All right. Like, and that's legit. It's like, okay, that's going to be his name. His name was Pain. He was born into pain. Everywhere he went, he was going to be a pain. And he wasn't, it's not, it's not fair, he was born into it. He had a label. From the day he breathed his first breath, he had a label. I want to encourage some of you today because you were born into a scenario or a situation or maybe you had friends over your life when you were younger, maybe in middle school someone said something and now you carry a spirit of rejection because you've been labeled by a word that was not God's word but you've accepted it as God's word and now you got to live with the word that you believe but I'm here to tell you if that word doesn't line up with his word it's time to break, it's time to break the label that somebody else labeled you as, even though it wasn't the label that God gave you, to say, I am not pain, I am not disqualified, I am not a mistake, I am not who you said I am, I am who God said I am. There's a label. And I think many of us are living with labels, not realizing that is the limitation on your life. You are limited by the label that you believe. What is the most important voice in your life? It's a, it's a, I'll answer it. I just wanted some silence in there. Because some people would be like, God's voice, of course, God, God. right? <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. The most important voice in your life is the voice you believe. So I would venture to say, yes, the most important voice that has ever spoken, it's God. Yeah, yeah, it's the most significant voice ever spoken, God. However, if you don't believe that voice, then that is irrelevant 
for you to say that's the most important voice because to you, it's not the most important voice. The voice that you believe is the most important voice to you. So you now have to process and say, which voice am I believing? And so many of you believe what you were born into rather than believing what you're called into. You've been called into greatness, but you've been born at average and mediocrity, so you're stuck with what you've been born into. I'll never have a marriage. Look at my parents. They never had a marriage. I'm always going to be an addict. Look at my parents. They, had, they were an addict. It just runs through my family, but God's over here saying, look at Jabez, able to say, I'm not going to become my name. I'm going to become a son. I'm not going to become what they called me. I'm going to become an alignment with heaven. And Jabez named pain decides to pray. I almost named this sermon when pain prays. When pain prays. Something happens. You caught the ear of God. He caught the heart of God. But I love that it didn't just jump into the prayer. This pain man jumped in. And it's so funny because, it's like, again, you're, you're naming people, but it's not like today where you could go on Google, right? Like, and you could just top 50 baby names. It's like creek, river, pond, if you're a Modesto, canal. You know, like, it's not that. Like, legit, you have no opportunity to make a decision for yourself and you're already labeled as a certain something. And this is Jabez's disposition. It's not fair. It's not, this is why so many people are like, I just wasn't fair. I wasn't born with, I'm like, no, no, no. We all have God as an opportunity to say yes to him. And if we do, I promise his bloodline is stronger than yours. And so all of a sudden, he says, you know what, I'm, okay, when pain prays, pain began to pray. But he doesn't just pray first. That's what I was getting at. It says he was more honorable, a little sentence that they snuck in there. He was more honorable than his brothers. Almost setting the stage of why God answered his prayer. Because I think a lot of times we'll pray, but if we pray from a dirty life and we get what God has, we'll keep our dirty life and also get what God has. But maybe God wants you to become honorable, which means this, my life is his. I'm going to live righteous. I'm going to live holy. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to hear from him. My life is consecrated, which means I'm set apart for him. My life is, he is my priority, an honorable life, where he is first, he is foremost, he's everything. God is everything to me. That's what he's saying. Like, I am set apart for his use, for his purpose, for his special use. That's, I'm, I'm living an honorable life. In my decisions, I honor God. In my, my coming, my going, I honor God. And so he lived an honorable life. So before God ever granted his request, there was a lifestyle lived from Jabez that I think is so significant that I know we jumped straight into the prayer. And we're like, look what God did through this prayer. But I said, wait, 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 wait. You can't just be you, talk you, walk you, and get him. Your life has to change. Because it's amazing to me how many people, again, you could get what God has. But if your lifestyle does not become more honorable to him, you will hold on to the dishonor and the disobedience that's in your life, the dysfunction that's in your life. You will hold on to it, and you will think that you are approved in your lifestyle. When God said, I'm trying to move you from that lifestyle, I want you to grow up. See, I am 38 now. I do not act like I'm 18 anymore. At some point, you have to grow up. I do know that there is a mindset issue. You know what mindset is? It's where did you set your mind? That we have some people that are maybe 45, but they're acting like they're 12 because you set your mind in the classroom that you got rejected from a teacher when you were in, and all of a sudden you set your mind in a place where you're still bound by the same things you've been bound by. But God's over here saying at some point you got to put some things away, realize he's the great physician, which means he heals you and grow up. We got to mature as believers and get our minds out of the places we've been stuck. Well, I was born into it. It's not you. They said it over me. That's not your label. And grow through things. It's not what you go through. It's what you grow through. And so Jabez lived an honorable life against all odds. You cannot discredit the fact that you are the way you are because of where you came from. Because look at Jabez, caught in a genealogy, 
still cried out to God, broke through, became a difference. I don't know where you've come from, but it's time to decide where you're going. I don't know where you've been, but it's time to, time to change where you're headed. You have an entire, don't let your history be a detriment to your destiny. Time to look forward and say, I might have come from there, but I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to change the generations of my last name. I'm not going to pass down generational curses. I'm going to pass down generational blessings. I choose to change. I choose to alter the entire family line based off this praise, based off this, based off how you live. Watch what God will do through your yes. Stop being okay. Be Jabez. Stick out a little bit. Have people call you a pain. And I don't think he was just called a pain because the family thought he was a pain. I think God was using his name because he, came a, he became a pain to hell. An absolute pain because he realized I'm going to live an honorable life and then watch this prayer. Well, let's jump into the framework of the prayer now. Now that we are ready to go and we are set and we are realizing that, yes, I, I got to change my lifestyle. I need to be challenged. I need to be convicted. That's okay. To be convicted, that's good. That means you feel, still feel the, the Holy Spirit speaking to you and working through you and change those things. And then all of a sudden, he starts his prayer. Oh, God. Right? Just like how you start your prayers. I've been listening to your prayers, and they've been starting pretty rough. I, I, think, I think this kind of throws me off a little bit, because I would start praying, and maybe you do the same thing I would do. Naturally would start praying about my pain, or what I'm missing in my life. And it, it's just, a, it's human nature to do that. Like, God, here is my struggle. Do something. Just, yeah, Change it, God. And Jabez rose up, oh, God. And it reminds me so much of this is how we pray, that sometimes you come to the church lobby and we have a pain off. You know what a pain off is? It means you, you have a story and you have a struggle and you're in a valley, but you meet somebody else that has a struggle and, and they, they're in a valley as well. And you begin to tell them everything that you're going through. And you're like, this is what's happening. It's just been really hard. It's been really hard at work and the Karens are attacking me and this is all happening. And, and then over here, and then the, the person you told, they don't even acknowledge what you just said. They just go straight to their story. Well, it's a pain off. And we walk around the church lobby as if we're holding up a trophy of who's the worst. Who's doing the worst right now? I think it's me. I think, it's, I, think, I, think I won today. I am doing the absolute worst. And I'm like, what, what is this mentality that we have gravitated towards that we always have to be doing so bad? It's so tough. It's, oh, it's like, at some point, the joy of salvation needs to hit your soul. That point alone should cause you to erupt. I got pain. I got people against me. I got a valley, but I got a God, and I choose the joy of salvation. And if I got to look at my eternity to get joy, I'll do it. I'll realize that heaven is my home. God knows my name. The future's in his hands. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I got God. Does anybody in this place have a God that is given? Giving them joy that no person can take from them. At some point, you don't need to have the pain off. You need to be a joy-filled, peace-filled presence. Oh God. No. This first statement. Oh God, bless me. What a first statement. What a first line in the prayer. Oh God, would you bless me? I think this goes against maybe a lot of our feelings because I think we, we think the blessings of God are, are earned, not given. I, I, think, I think it's this understanding that if you live right, then you'll get it. You do need to live right. We just talked about it. However, you don't live to a certain level because at what point are you all of a sudden good enough? Who's measuring that? Because there is only one good, and that one is God. So this is why I always say this. It's not about your perfection. It's about your pursuit. Why did God keep using King David? 
it wasn't about his perfection, it was about his pursuit. So Bathsheba did his thing. It wasn't about his perfection, it was about his, he is a man after God's own heart. His pursuit cost him to get what God had. And so there's this beauty and understanding that God wants to bless you. And not in a weird, slimy way where you're watching Christian TV at night and they're selling anointing bottles and sweat rags for $3.33. I've been saved too long. Uh, like, not, not that, like, and then you're going to get, stop, stop, stop. Very healthy, step forward. First off, the definition of blessing, anything God gives you is a blessing. Anything that comes from God is a blessing. So let's redefine blessing. It's not just house, cars, materials, money. It's anything God gives me is a blessing. Now, can it also be connected to some of these things that I have? Yes, some of y'all need to go home and just thank God that you have a home. You know how many people? Pastor Rich, can I poke, can I poke on people a little bit? Can I poke on people? They, they, you know how many people will walk around in their walk-in closet claiming they don't have anything from God? I told you I was going to mess with them a little bit. And I'm like, do you understand there are people in other sides of the world that have a fraction of what God has opened up in his, and given you? Like, stop for a moment and realize, I'm blessed. I have more than what I started with. I thank God he knows my name. I thank God he's given me what I have. See, some of y'all were about to cuss out your kids, but God held your mouth back and gave you a supernatural peace blessing. See, some of y'all were about to do that to your boss too, and then you were going to lose your job and be flung into a whole different blessing that God gave you self-control in moments where you didn't have self-control. See, some of y'all got to realize the Holy Spirit has kept you from dangers, has kept you from entrapments, has kept you from saying yes to things that you, and so all of a sudden you don't even know about those blessings, but it's time to praise God for the blessings of hindrance. He hindered you from going down harmful paths. So some of you need to thank God that you didn't die in that car wreck. You didn't overdose on that drug. Some of you got to thank God that it didn't happen to you. You didn't marry the wrong person because you were about to. God's hand intervened, and I thank God that he blessed. Oh, God, would you bless me? And there's a fundamental principle here. Just because he's blessed you already doesn't mean he's short on the next one. God does not run short on supply. So Jabez had this realization. Wait, if God really is this big, I put a demand on heaven. I want an open heaven on my life. God, would you bless my family, bless my mind, bless my business, bless my future, bless my kids, bless everything that I put my hands to because it wasn't for him. You are blessed to be a blessing. See, there's a really important part here. You don't need to be a spiritual hoarder. There's a TV show for that. You ever see that show? It's wild. They roll up into some folks' house. They crack that closet open. It's like, uh, ma'am, that was when you were in seventh grade. You don't fit in that anymore. Give it away. But it's just so sentimental. It's when I got asked for my first date, and then there's like these almost like ties to these things. And they don't want to give it away because they've connected it to purpose. Things in their past, they've connected it to purpose. So everything that God gives you is not your purpose. It's actually meant to flow through you. The purpose is not that you have it. It's what you do with it. Come on, I'm teaching somebody. It's not that I got it. It's what I do with it when I have it. This is now purpose. It's not for me. I am not blessed for me. You are not blessed for you. You're blessed to give away. Release. Stop being stingy. Uh, come on, man. Give it away. Release it. Oh, I just don't know. I want to control it. If you want to control it, that means you're the owner. If you're the owner, God no longer is. That's why we're stewards, he's owners.
He's the owner. I steward what he gave me. It was not from me, but it is for him. And God, what do you want me to do with what you just gave me? I am blessed to be a blessing. Because the second part, he says, by the way, I'm not going to stop the blessing. I'm going to keep it going. For the religious people in the back, oh, God, that you would bless me. And by the way, enlarge my territory. Oh, my goodness. He's just stepping all over toes right now. You know, he's not just over toes. I think he's stepping all over the religious mindset that you have to have little to be holy. He said, you know what, God? Why don't you expect? Here's what this is. Enlarge my territory. Let's break it down in a very fundamental way. Enlarge my territory means, God, would you expand my kingdom influence? Influence looks different for every single person. Influence is not bad. It only becomes bad when you let influence become you. And so you have to steward what God gives you. Not everybody in here, you're going to end up having all these followers on social media, but your influence is amongst your family, maybe. Maybe it's amongst people at your work. But you do. Did you know that even the most introverted person in their lifetime is going to impact and affect 10,000 people? So, like, I think sometimes we're like, no, I'm quiet. I'm melancholy. I'm chill. I like reading books with candles. Just leave me alone. I wa- you know, I watch online. I don't like humans. Even the most introverted person in their life is going to impact and affect 10,000 people. So whether you like it or not, you're a leader. You're welcome. You're a leader. People are watching you. You impact atmospheres. What you say matters. So God, would you enlarge my territory, which means this, would you expand my kingdom influence, not for my name, but for yours? Because here's what I've learned. When your influence grows, so does your testimony. So does your opportunity to share your story. So do you have open doors now to talk to people that previously didn't want to talk to you. And I pray that this is the year. I've been praying this over you. I've been praying that this is the year God produces and gives you kingdom influence to the level that is confusing to the current culture. Like they have to, they're looking at you like, how are you having success in such an economic downturn? How are you having success when everything is inflated and struggling? How? And all of a sudden, you're not going to say, because I am brilliant, I am him. Shut up. No, it's because of God. God's given you the ability. God's given you the wisdom. God gave you the open doors. God gave you your next steps. So thank God for the expansion. Can I just get real? Can I just even get real, even further, even further? And, and again, you're hearing this from a very, very hopefully just grounded perspective. God, enlarge my territory. I've been praying for you, everybody here, balcony, everybody, that if you, business-wise, that God, I don't care if you're 100 air, 1,000 air, million, it don't matter to me, that God would take your business, add some zeros to it. Why, why, why? Because all of a sudden, you're going to be someone sought out. And I would rather them seek you out because I know what you're made of. I know that you acknowledge God in all that you'll do. He's going to give it to those he can trust with his glory. And so I know that your testimony is going to be so much better. So I've been praying that there's been an expansion of kingdom influence over your business, over your yes, over your life. Become a millionaire. Absolutely. Buy a boat. Invite me. I don't care. Let's go. But again, it's not what you have, it's what you do with it. Don't let it become you. I'm giving kingdom influence not to build personal kingdoms. I'm giving kingdom influence to build kingdom things. The house of God. Okay, so now God wants, and he said, but very specifically, enlarge my territory. Very specific point that he does decided to pray over where he was standing, not over what someone else already had. And I do think there is a temptation for our prayer life to become consistent of what other people have been blessed with. God, you did that for them, would you do it for me? Instead of saying, God, I celebrate what you've done for them, but God, use my territory and where I'm standing, and let's do something right here. Because I don't want a blessing that was meant for you. I want a blessing that was meant for me. I want, it, I want it formulated to my family. I want it shaped around my life. 
I, I, I need it, you know, God bless you, but you have two kids. I got four. I need, I need double dose. Come on. Like, so God, I need you to do it in my world, in my family, in my business. And I, I think we always get so caught up. It's like, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. And then there's this other statement, the grass is greener on the other side because they water it. I'm like, it's so dumb. It might be true, but here's, what, here's you know, you, my version of this. Can I give you a 2024 version of this? It's not that they water it. Sometimes you're looking over and their grass is greener because it's turf. It's fake. In a social media inflated everybody's lying culture, maybe what you're comparing your life to is not even real. Maybe what they have, they're fabricating it because they don't have purpose. You don't need to ask God for something fake. You need to stand on what's real and say, God bless me where I'm at. God use me where I'm at. God do what only you can do. God take my fracture, take my brokenness and use it for your glory. I don't want what they have. I want what you have. I don't need no turf up in my life. I got enough fake around here. I need something real. Enlarge my territory. I got to move on. I'll give you one last thought with this though. That God, we're going to say it like this. Man makes plans. God orders steps. So, okay, what pr a practical next step? For, for us, is to realize that I'm not just going to make plans of God, you're going to use my influence, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, i got to take a step. Did you think they looked at the water, people looked at the water and said, that looks walkable? No, water is not walkable. But his word is faithful. And Peter did not walk on water, he walked on a word. He only walked on the water after Jesus said, come. And then he decided to walk. We get stuck on the water that is not a walkable substance. His word is. So, so many of you are making plans but not walking towards realizing that, hey, God orders steps. God orders. So, okay, practical. Can I get, can I get super practical? I got the word. Okay, lead an age group. Expand your influence. Get involved with a class. Do something in the community with the church. Stop complaining about being on the outskirts. Come on, don't be one temptation away from falling out. I, we don't need any, any more Eutychuses in the church that are watching church from a window seal only to fall asleep and fall out and you need a miracle to even to get resurrected. No, be the person leaning in, step in, sign up, be a part, expand your influence. Okay, third thing, third thing, third thing. Then he said, by the way, if you do the blessing and you do the enhancing, I'm going to need your hand to be on me. <laughs> Because if you give me those things, I cannot keep those things or sustain those things. Have you ever realized with God, he will not give you something that you can handle by yourself? Even a blessing? And there are so many things I want to say. Because even when Peter was fishing, when Jesus showed up on the scene, he was like, you know, he didn't have disciples yet. He's looking around. Peter's fishing on the wrong side the entire night. He's about to hang it up, draw it in. And Jesus rolls up, 8 a.m. in the morning. Sucker, put it on the other side. It's my version. I like reading the Bible that way. It's a little ghetto. <laughs> Put it on the other side, bro. Bro? Yeah, bro. Put it on the other side. <laughs> fish. But what happened when the fish got in the boat? It said the boat almost, it was actually about to sink. They pulled in another boat. So what happens when God does more than you can hold? If you held it by yourself, you'll sink. We don't talk about that part. We only talk about the pain that'll sink us, but what about the yes from God that might sink us because the calling is heavy? It might sink you when you get it if you have the wrong hands that are holding it. Because when God gave it, it was never meant for your hands. That's why he prayed, God, let your hand never leave my life. His hand represents, especially in this context, his presence. May your presence never leave me. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God, I need your presence. Bless me, enlarge my territory, but God, may I never forget why I have what I have. May I never forget who gives me life. May I never forget the salvation you have given me. I need your presence. 
And I know it's difficult because it's just like, yeah, I mean, I love the presence of God, but that doesn't mean you're not going to go through difficulties. That's why he prayed next. God, keep me from harm and deliver me from pain. Okay, keep me from harm. Look at this. So he says, I got your presence, but I still feel, listen to this, spiritually attacked. Like many of us today are. But you don't need to become discouraged by spiritual attacks. Because I know they can become hurtful, which is why he said, keep me from harm. Because I know if I'm blessed, I know if he gives me enlarge my territory and his hand is upon me, which means I have the presence and the provision of God. Okay, awesome. But God, keep me from harm. Keep me from, keep me from these valleys becoming my identity. Keep me from this dysfunction becoming what I'm labeled as. So many people go through things, but they become those things that they went through. For example, you were meant to go through it, grow through it, but instead you have resentment from it. You have bitterness from it. You have offense that was born out of it. You now have a dysfunction of a fractured faith because of it. Instead, you were supposed to be built by it and it hurts you. So keep me from harm because you're going to be spiritually attacked. It's not encouraging. I know. In this life, there will be trouble. Take heart. He's overcome the world. There will be trouble. But here's what I love about spiritual attacks. They're not harmful. They're helpful. You know what I mean by that? Here's what I mean by that. Because I think a lot of people, they're harmful. Spiritual attacks to me, they're helpful. They help me realize I am right where I need to be. Because why would hell take out its very precious time? Because it cannot be all places at all times. Why would it try to attack me if what I was doing was insignificant? Which means I must be in the right moment, in the right place, at the right time to be on hell's hit list. Hey, and listen, if you're not butting heads with the enemy, you might be walking with him. I mean, we, 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 might, we might be going on a date, you know, like, so here, here's, here's why this is an encouragement, though, because I, I already feel it in this room. Many of you have been fighting, haven't you? You've been fighting tooth and you've been going hard, and you feel like every turn there is something else. That's because the enemy is trying to get you to quit. He's trying to get you to walk away. He's trying to get you to go back to your label so you can stop walking towards your promise. And this is why you're fighting. But take courage. Realize that if you're in a fight, there's already a victor. All you have to do is stand still and realize the God of angel armies, the God who knows your name, is for you, not against you. And then it ends. I got to end. I'm going to pray for some people. And then it ends. Oh, and by the way, deliver me from pain in case I missed anything else. And so I'm reading this, and I'm like, you know, I'm reading it, and I'm writing my sermon. I'm like, cool. Then we're going to pray for people after that because it's like deliver me from pain. That's the perfect place. And God said, read it again. I'm like, oh, I thought I was done. Read it again. I was like, I know the prayer of Jabez, guy. You know, I love, I love this prayer. It's amazing. Like, no, read it again. I read, that, read that thing like 10 times. I'm like, what are you trying to say to me? I feel, like, I feel like he's trying to get me to see something that I currently don't see. And I read the last line again over and over and over and deliver me from pain. Deliver me. And the Spirit just said, you remember what he was named? Pain. So he decided to say, oh, Lord, would you bless me? Would you enlarge my territory? May your hand be upon me. Would you keep me from harm? And would you deliver me from pain? Because I was named pain. He ended the prayer by saying, God, would you deliver me from me? I don't know about anybody else. Would you deliver me from the shame that I felt? Would you deliver me from the guilt that I've walked with? Would you deliver me from the sin I've committed? Would you deliver me from the consequences of my decisions? Would you deliver me and get me out of my own way? 
so I can get all that God has. Can you stand to your feet all over this place? Because I think a lot of you are maybe like me. God, do it. God's going to do it. But you aren't even delivered from you. Some of y'all are going to get set free in here this morning. I'm going to read you one more scripture. In Matthew 8, Matthew 8, and God did it. God's going to do it. Then Jesus said to the centurion, this is Jesus, go let it be done as you believed it would. His servant was healed at the moment. Go and let it be done as you believed. And there is a transition in how you need to think right here in this scripture. Here is the transition for you. And it almost compounds and approves of what Jabez was praying. Oh, can we really pray like that? Can we really believe like that? And really see God do it? And can, can we really do that? Yes, Jesus rolls up on the scene and says, let it be done according to what you believed. It's a paradigm shift. Because I think some of us in here, God can do it, fine, let him do it. What if God's not going to do it according to what he can do, but according to what you believe? And that's a bit of a mixed bag. That's why I'm encouraging you. A God that can grant any request. I don't know if he will. I don't know when he will. But you need to get it out of your heart, out of your mouth and say, God, I believe in a cancer delivering God. I believe in, a, in an addiction breaking God. I believe in a chain breaking, anointing. I believe that what I've struggled with for 20 years and 20 seconds, you can deliver me from it. So some of y'all in this room need to say, God, deliver me from everything I've acquired over my life and realize that today is the day of deliverance. Would you bow your heads? Father, I pray right now you'll soften hearts, you'll open ears, and would you speak? Prayer team, you can come down. As the prayer team's coming down, if you need to get right with Jesus, you know you're far from him. You know you're distant from him. You need to say yes to his salvation. When I get to three, I want you to lift your hand. You know, you know, you know you're not right with him. And you know you came here broken. You know you came here in here spiritually limping, needing something real from God. If you need to receive the salvation of Jesus Christ, when I get to three, I want you to lift your hand so I know who I'm praying with. Are you ready? One, two, three. Lift your hands if that's you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Wow. I see your hands. Dozens in every section. Hell, you lost. Devil, you're dumb. God wins again. Everybody lift their hands. Everybody lift their hands. I don't even know if we can count all your hands. That's wild. Say, Jesus, I invite you to be Lord of my life. I receive your salvation. I believe in your cross. And I believe in the empty tomb. And from this day forward, change me forever. I am yours. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Yeah, we thank God. But we're going to stay here. We got this prayer team down here. Here's what I saw when I was writing the sermon, more than a sermon. I know you got some nuggets. I know you got some things that I said in there. Hopefully that it challenges you. It's a word from God, not from me. But here's what I want. Do not leave this place if you need prayer for anything. But I want to break, I want to, I want to, I want to break a notion that the only people that need the altar are the people that are doing the worst. What did Jabez pray? Oh, Lord, would you bless me? Some of y'all are just praying for a blessing, whether it's business, whether it's relational, whether it's just internal, and you refuse to go down and get, why not? Let us partner with you and pray over whatever you're going through. God bless, maybe it's kingdom influence. God, I pray for an expansion in what you have given me. Yeah, okay, come down, because we're going to stand with you too.
Okay, God, may your hand be upon me. And that's protection, that's provision, that's presence. God, yes, I need that too. So I'm going to come down here. We will stay here as long as we need to stay here. I'm ending right on time so we could do this right here, right now, because we're going to stand with you. And yes, this includes any miracle you're believing for. If it's in body, we pray in the name of Jesus, let it be done. May your body line up with his word. We rebuke anything that's in your life and in your body that doesn't like, yeah, we're going to stand on it. Maybe it's an emotional healing. Maybe it's a resentment. God, keep me from harm. Maybe the harm got to your heart. Maybe you're not doing good in your mental health. Well, don't walk out and try to Google answers. Don't just get another pill to take. Why don't you get a presence to fill? You, you don't need a prescription. You need presence. So let us stand with you. So bow your heads. Father, I pray you soften hearts. God, over these next just a couple minutes, we're going to say yes to you. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. God, I pray miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. I thank you that we're going to walk out of this place saying, and God did it, and God did it, and God did it. Would you heal us? Would you move us? Would you build us? And may be this be the year we see more evidence of your hand in our life than ever before. When I get to three, I want you to step out of your seats with both this if you need to come down and, and get prayer are you ready one two three get out of your seats come on down we're gonna pray for you everybody come on let's begin to clap and thank god that he's doing what he said he would do come on there's more than that there's i know you're nervous but step out of your seat come on balcony come on down we're gonna pray with you we're gonna pray yeah come on come on come on come on and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna let him keep coming and here's the thing some of y'all need to stay and get prayed for but everybody else, we're gonna worship for a moment. Come on out, we're gonna worship for a moment. We love you, we're gonna see you next week. If you need to go, you need to grab your kids, to be amazing. Hey, we wanna see you in the house next Sunday. God is doing something incredible here. You need to sign up for an H group. You need to sign up for an H, H class. You need to be a part. But I'm gonna do this, you are released. However, we're gonna, we're gonna pray for some people right here. We're gonna contend, we're gonna see deliverance in the name of Jesus, amen? Come on, amen? I love you and the best is yet to come. You are dismissed. If you want prayer, come on down and let's worship for a minute.